have some fun tonight going through mock exam questions. Everybody's always nervous about those mock exam questions. That's why I want to teach you guys how to pick the best answer. So everybody who's here now, is everybody here taking the quality assurance exam soon? Or have you been audited and you plan to take it next year? So you've been audited for next year. If you guys don't mind just typing in the chat box for me to let me know. It's just kind of interesting for me to know kind of who's taking the exam soon. Because if you were audited for this year, you'll, you do have to take the exam soon, you guys. So it's not like you have um, months to take it. It has to be before the end of the year because you have three chances to pass. Of course, I want to be teaching you guys how to all pass the first time so you're not stressed out about having to do it again. And it, it all depends on picking the best answer, as we know. Um, no, I haven't clicked record yet. Um, I'm going to do that in one more minute. And I have the sniffles, you guys. I apologize. I have allergies, in case you're wondering. As I'm dropping things. I did try to quickly clean up before I came on the webinar. I'm a mobile dental hygienist, so I literally just got done work and I didn't want to be late for my own webinar. That would have been horrible, so I hope it's not too messy behind me. And thank you guys so much for answering and letting me know if you're taking the exam soon. So it looks like a lot of you guys are taking it soon this year. And some of you have even commented saying that you've taken the exam once and you were unsuccessful. Please don't feel bad about that you know how else can i say it i don't want you guys to feel discouraged about not passing the first time that's why they give you three chances and i'll tell you why because a lot of hygienists think oh it's going to be a piece of cake you might have been talking to other hygienists who said it was so easy you don't even have to study for it well they were lying just so you know they were lying you need to study for this exam it's not like the board exam but it's similar so that's what i'm going to teach you guys so for those of you who said you've taken it once and you were unsuccessful, don't feel discouraged. You can pass quite often. You just need a tutoring prep course and that can help you. Um, sorry, guys, that's like in my eye here. Um, even if you're not part of my quality assurance um, prep course, you don't have to be. This is for everybody. I want to teach you guys how to pick the best answer. Now, oh, sorry, I did click record. Okay, perfect. So those of you who are watching my recording, I was mumbling a bit there talking about random things. I'm sorry, um, but that's okay. If you guys wanted to hear the rambles, you can. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrea Majewski. Um, I've been with Dental L Tutoring now. I've been a tutor for about 15 years. I teach dental hygienists, um, sorry, dental hygiene students and dental assisting students pass the board exam but I also teach and mentor dental hygienists. So for the quality assurance exam, if you ever have an um, on-site visit by the CDHO, I can help you guys with that. I have gone through one myself. Um, I teach hygienists how to open up their own mobile dental hygiene business, your own teeth whitening business. So I do do a variety of things. I've been in the profession now for almost 16 years. I'm a restorative hygienist. I have my own business. So I used to work in dental offices for many, many years. Now I'm a mobile hygienist. So I just have my own business, which is pretty fantastic. Let me tell you. And I tutor as well. So a full-time mobile hygienist and a full-time teacher and tutor. Um, and I should mention you guys, if you have questions at any time, please just type in the chat box. You don't have to wait until the end. I'm not going to stop the webinar as soon as we're done, I'm going to make sure that if anybody has questions that I do answer them. Okay, so this is how I usually work with my students. We will be going through mock exam questions. So multiple choice questions. Some are easier than others. Some are very difficult. I'm not going to give you guys the answer right away. I want all of you to type in the chat box what you feel the answer is. So there will be A, B, C, or D. I'm not marking you. It's just for me to know if everybody gets the answer right. I don't have to re-explain the question and talk about it. If everybody gets it wrong, clearly I need to stop and explain it. So is everybody good with that so far? Does everybody understand to type in the chat box and let me know what your answer is? After the first one, you'll get it. 
Um, yes, I am a mobile dental hygienist. So I go to patients' homes and clean their teeth. Very exciting, eh? Okay, you guys. So let's just go through the first question. I assume everybody can see everything. Everybody's good. If you can't see something, please let me know. If for some reason you can't hear me, let me know. Okay, so I'm going to read the first question out to you guys, but then I'm going to be silent to let you guys think. Okay, so some of you guys might have seen this question already. Are you required to report child abuse even if you don't have proof? I'll let you guys read through the answer so I don't sound annoying and I want you guys to think. Please type in the chat box with your answer. I'm going to give you a minute to answer, so don't worry. I'm not going to rush anybody. I have the sniffles from allergies in case you didn't hear me in the, in the beginning. <laughs> it's not COVID, <laughs> it's allergies. And I'm assuming a lot of you guys did see this answer already. So I'm not gonna explain it too much because I explained this question and the next one in the YouTube um, channel video. So see, everybody's getting it right, which is perfect. C is the best answer. I want to quickly talk to you guys about abuse. They will ask this on the exam. They always do and they have before. Um, we are required to report child abuse and senior abuse. We cannot, well, and that's where it's a fine line. Let's say you see a 30, a 30, a 30, a 35 year old, or you see an adult who's not a child, not a senior. Um, oh, sorry, somebody just says you can't see the questions. You might have to log back out again because everybody else can see the questions okay. So I apologize. You might have to log out and then log back in again. So we have to report child abuse and senior abuse. If you have a 35 year old or an adult who you do report abuse, but and you're telling her, you know, you should do something about it, you should report you know, they have, they don't have to press charges, if that makes sense. You do still report it, but they would then contact that person. And if that person says, oh no, everything's fine, don't worry about it, they literally stop the investigation there. But think about it this way. If you report that you suspect child abuse or senior abuse, they're not gonna call that child and say, hey, is everything okay? They're not going to call a senior and say, hey, is everything okay? They will automatically go out and report it. But when it comes to adults, you know, we can't just automatically assume that things are going to be dealt with because they then have to get in touch with them. It may or may not have any further action. But for the exam, I want you guys to remember child abuse and senior abuse, we must report it. So if on the, if on the quality assurance exam, if they try to trick you, by saying things like your boss, the dentist says not to report it. Your boss, the dentist has reported it already last year. Your boss, the dentist, you know, doesn't want you to report or something. It doesn't matter what your dentist says. It doesn't matter. We are under a different association as you all should know by now. We're not under the, the RCDSO. We are under CDHO, our dental hygiene association. We need to do what they want us to. Any questions about that, don't hesitate to comment and I can definitely go back and talk about it. Okay, next question, you guys. Can the dental hygienist take radiographs when the dentist is not in the office? I'll let you guys read through the questions and please comment in the chat box what you think. Okay, good, thank you. I'm glad that you can see the questions now because that's kind of important. You wouldn't be able to answer them very well if you couldn't. So I definitely wanted to make sure that you could, okay. Sometimes you just have to log back out and then in again if you're new to Zoom, but they're usually pretty good. Yes, this is being recorded. I'm going to post it in the Facebook group that I have, Dental L Tutoring. So if you're not part of that, just quickly join to get the recording afterwards because um, that's where I will be posting it. I'm assuming you all saw this question too because you're answering nice and quick, which is fantastic. Looks like everybody's getting it correct. 
Does anybody have any questions about this though? Because I find a lot of people do. And even I had to think about this for a second. So there's been a lot of talk in the past where let's say you're working in a dental office on a Saturday. The dentist doesn't work Saturdays. It's only hygienists and somebody at the front desk. You might be seeing only perio patients on Saturdays. Can you do that? Can you not do that? You do have to be a self-initiated dental hygienist, meaning self-initiated. So you have taken the extra courses, you have the extra skills to be able to do that. So basically, if a medical emergency happens, you're, you're not going to be afraid to jump right in there. But to take x-rays, there needs to be a client-specific prescription, which is what it says right there. The, that's the key word. They might try to trick you guys on the exam by saying something else where, yes, you can take them, but the dentist has to be okay with it. That won't be the best answer. You have to have a client specific prescription, not take two bite wings on everybody that day. It has to say in the chart, which is preferred in the chart, it needs to say something to the effect of um, two bite wings have been prescribed by Dr. So-and-so, and then he signs it, okay? Written is always better than verbal because anybody can say, well, the dentist told me to take them. I called and the dentist told me to take them. You know, you can't do that. Even when you write your notes, you should be saying two bite wings were taken as a client specific prescription by Dr. So-and-so. I know it's a lot of writing, you guys, but that's what we have to do. Is everybody okay with that? If you have questions, please do not hesitate because some of you guys did say A. So I hope when I explained it, that makes more sense. So we can take x-rays when the dentist is not in the office as long as we're self-initiated. It wasn't specific about what type of hygienist you are. So that's why you don't have to worry about being specific in the answer. Um, Vanessa, yes, and that's fine. So you can write like two bite wings have been prescribed by Dr. So-and-so. That is fine because you're, you know, yes, it, it, it almost looks better to have them sign it too, but it still holds up. You know, it's totally fine because technically we can say anything in our chart and, you know, who are they going to go by the patient or the dental hygienist? They're, they're going to go by us because we're the dental professionals. We have an ethical obligation to tell the truth, right? So let's just hope that you did have that, you know, prescription by the doctor, which is always the case anyway, really. So uh, Francine, good, good question. So you don't necessarily need it in writing by the dentist, but the CDHO does say that that is preferred. But as long as it says somewhere that two bite wings or panorex or whatever has been prescribed by Dr. Smith, then that's fine. So you can write that and sign it. That's completely fine. Does that make sense? So that's a really good question. The question was kind of vague. The answers were, were kind of vague, but yes, that is absolutely right. Okay, guys, so let's go through some more here. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know how that got all messed up. Sorry, guys, let me just make this smaller for you guys. I really don't know how I did that. Okay, so Haley has generalized severe gingivitis. She is new to your office and admits she only brushes once every few days when she remembers. Sound familiar? How are you going to explain the inflammatory process to her? I'll let you guys read the questions again so I'm not sounding too annoying for you. But what would you guys say to this? And by the way, don't be afraid to get the right answer. You know, I'm not marking you. It's just more for me to see how everybody's doing. <clears throat> what do you guys think? And you know, even if you're not sure, pick one. Like pretend like you're taking the exam now. Never leave an answer blank. I hope everybody knows that. When you take the exam, don't leave an answer blank. Just pick one, even if you have no clue. So see you guys, I'm getting a few different answers here, which is good because that means I have something to explain. If everybody was getting them right, I would, only, I would almost be concerned that my questions weren't hard enough. So I like to see different answers. This is good. 
So I'm getting a lot of A's and a lot of C's. I would say it's about half and half, to be honest. So let's talk about it. So, oh, let me fix this again for you guys. So I went ahead and highlighted a couple things for you. So let's read the question again. Haley has generalized severe gingivitis. She is new to your office and admits she only brushes once every few days when she remembers. How are you going to explain the inflammatory process to her? So on the exam, they tend to put in a bunch of useless information. So sometimes you only have to read the last part of it. How are you going to explain the, um, the inflammatory process to her? It wouldn't really matter if she didn't have gingivitis, if she didn't have perio, she had no plaque, no tartar, nothing. But if the question was, Haley wants to know about the inflammatory process, how would you explain it to her? Okay, how would you explain it? So A is the best answer because this is the best answer out of all of them. Let me tell you why. So a lot of you guys did pick C. So gingivitis isn't always only chronic. Does everybody know that there's two different types? You have chronic um, gingivitis or you have acute gingivitis. Can anybody tell me what an example of acute gingivitis would be? And if you're not sure, that, um, that's okay because I do have some examples to you. Um, for you. So when you think gingivitis, you should automatically be thinking, okay, we're talking about the gums. The gums are probably puffy, red, bleeding, not healthy. Gingivitis, you know, dumb it down. Think, okay, guys, what is gingivitis? Think about that and then go, okay, how would I answer this question? So C is not correct because there's two different types. You can have chronic and you can have acute. Does everybody understand why C is not correct? So yes, exactly, thank you. So an example of acute would be food and passion. Think if there's a popcorn kernel stuck under the gums. The gums are going to bleed, they're gonna be sore, it's probably going to be red in that area. But as soon as you remove that popcorn kernel, literally immediately the patient will feel better. That's acute, so something happened very quickly. Chronic, happens over time. Gingivitis is most often chronic everywhere. If it's due to, like if they have no redness, no, no bleeding, but a first molar on the upper left is red, bleeding, swollen, sore, that's acute. One tooth is localized, acute. So is everybody good with that? So how would you explain the inflammatory process? So again, A is the better answer. B is not correct because gingivitis is not healing. Gingivitis is bad. And D is not correct because something that results in attachment loss is perio, not gingivitis. Some of you guys might be thinking, wow, that was really easy. But most people got a gingivitis type question wrong on a lot of the quizzes. So that's why I threw this in here. Um, does everybody know the, the free um, practice quiz that I have? for the quality assurance exam. There is a free one. If you don't have that link, tell me and I can post it. I did add some more questions for you because the new exam has been updated. Um, well, not updated, but I'm hearing feedback from the exam. So I was able to add more questions. Any questions about this though, you guys, please don't hesitate to tell me, don't be shy. That's why I'm here. Oh, okay. So for those of you who don't know about the free practice quiz, I'm just gonna type it right now in the chat box, okay? And then we'll continue. So, and it's free. So I believe it's about 60 questions, hard questions by the way, but it's a great quiz because if you don't do well, it means you need additional help and I can help you. That's what I'm here for. So I put the free quiz for you guys there. Okay, next question. Darn, I don't know why it does that. Here we go. You are very welcome. It is, it is 60 questions. Okay, guys, so you are trying to explain to your patient why leaving gingivitis alone isn't a good idea. It needs to be treated. You explain that it can be reversed. What happens if inflammation continues to be left untreated? I bet this is gonna be hard for a lot of you because two answers, even more answers are correct, right? 
Yeah, exactly. But you have to pick the best answer. So that's what these questions are trying to teach you guys is how to pick the best answer and practice makes perfect. So what do you guys think? And Cheryl, thank you for answering so quickly. You are fast tonight. You don't have to be fast, by the way, guys. But <laughs> if you're fast, it means you know your stuff. If you have the right answer. This one is hard. No, I don't have COVID. <laughs> it's allergies. Like really bad ones, actually. I had McDonald's for lunch because I tend to eat in my car when I'm working and I forgot to bring my lunch. So I had McDonald's and I swear to God, like I don't feel good after I have McDonald's. It's so good, but I get the worst allergies. Like it's insane. So I think I have like food allergies or something. I don't know, guys. Tough life, eh? I know. Okay, so we're definitely going to talk about this one. I'm getting a lot of A's, a lot of B's, a lot of C's, and a lot of D's. I'm not even kidding. And that's why none of you guys can see what other people are typing in the chat box, because I don't want anybody to look at other people's answers and think, oh my goodness, they're so fast, I have to hurry up. Or, oh, everybody's picking A, that must be the right answer. That's why the answers are hidden, so that way I can only see them. Are you guys ready to talk about this? Because I'm getting a lot of different ones here. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. So D is the best answer. So I'm definitely going to explain this one because I got a lot of different ones. So let's read it again. You are trying to explain to your patient why leaving gingivitis alone is not a good idea. It needs to be treated. You explain that it can be reversed. What happens if inflammation continued, uh, continues untreated? So A is not correct because it doesn't have to lead to severe periodontitis. It can lead to early periodontitis, but then hopefully you catch it early enough and you don't let it progress. If a patient has gingivitis and they don't see you for 10 years, it could lead to severe gingivitis. So that's my thoughts of why a lot of you guys picked A, right? Because you're probably thinking, well, gingivitis leads to perio. Not necessarily. And please, you guys, stop me if you don't understand something, because I want to explain this perfectly for you. So B, some of you guys did say B. So if gingivitis is left untreated, yes, it, it would lead to a more severe case of gingivitis for sure. So that's not wrong, but it doesn't have to be severe. We don't know if this patient has early, moderate, or severe gingivitis. It doesn't say. So you don't know what type of gingivitis they might get if they have it progress further. What if they had severe gingivitis? So you can only get more severe gingivitis or it can lead to perio. So that's why B is not correct. C is not correct. It's not completely wrong, but if inflammation is left untreated, it doesn't necessarily mean it causes a cavity. When you think of your gums overall, don't think about cavities. Think about just the gums. Think gingivitis and perio. If you have cavities, focus on the teeth because just because you have a mouthful of cavities doesn't mean you will have gingivitis and doesn't even mean you will have perio. Does everybody understand that logic to it? And then D is the best answer because it will produce even more damage. That's a very simple way to explain to your client if, you know, you're explaining to them, well, you have gingivitis and they don't seem motivated. They don't seem to care. You want to say to them, okay, if this goes left untreated, it will get worse. Gingivitis is reversible, but only if you take the proper precautions to make it reversible. If you stop brushing, it can't get reversed. But also tell your client that gingivitis is reversible. There's hope but we don't want it to lead to periodontal disease because that's not reversible. Once the gingivitis is so bad, it can start eating away at the bone. You don't want the bone to get thinner, right? Like that's kind of when I tell my patients. So it produces more damage. As soon as somebody hears, it starts eating away at the bone. They kind of go, okay, what? Well, if it's left untreated, that could happen. But all of, out of all of these answers, D is the most correct, plain and simple. It will produce more damage. So for those of you guys who didn't pick D, does it now make sense why it's D? If not, please tell me. 
because I can probably explain it in a different way. That's what I do. I explain things. So is everybody okay with that? Okay, good. And even if I explain something and then it really doesn't make sense, tell me, I will not be insulted. I'm here to help you guys. So I can always explain it in a different way. I know the exam is stressful. I'm here to make it less stressful for everybody. Okay. Um, and no, you don't have to be a part of my quality assurance exam prep course to take the free quiz. Anybody can take it. So you don't have to pay for it, you guys. It's free. Okay. Check out this one. This is a tricky one. Histamine is important in dealing with allergic reactions. Mark is telling you he takes antihistamines every summer for his allergies. Where can histamine be found? I know a very stupid question. The CDHO wants you to know stupid things. Yes, I said it. I'm sorry if anybody from the CDHO is here. Oops, I hope not. But it's true, right, you guys? You, you won't need to know this for the real world, but you need to know it for the quality assurance exam. Exactly. So somebody just said that they had a very similar question on their last exam. I know. I heard about it. So what do you guys think? And I, I bet you guys don't know the answer, or I should say most of you guys don't know, because the answers are very slow. And that's the thing. You can look up a lot of answers online in some cases, like questions like this, absolutely. But other types of like dental hygiene questions, like if you're talking about brushing and flossing and stuff, you won't be able to look that up. This type of question, you can, absolutely. But you don't have unlimited time. So for those of you who think that you will just have an open book and you can look up the answers, you don't have enough time. Trust me on this. I promise you, you will be so stressed out. I had at least two people emailing me saying, and they admitted that they didn't study. They just planned to take the, the exam open book, but they ran out of time because they had to look up most of the answers. So they failed. I know this is a hard one, right? Okay, let's talk about it. So D, you guys, is the best answer. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't really know more in depth of this. This is just from the textbook. But D is the best answer just because this is where histamines are found, okay? So they are in mast cells and basophils and is released from platelet, um, platelets. Um, histamines, you guys. As soon as you see the word mast cells, they're probably talking about histamines, antihistamines, allergic reactions. Just a little tip for you. If you had no clue what the answer was, as soon as you see histamines, or allergic reactions think, oh, mast cells. If that's part of the answer, pick that as your right answer. Yes, a similar question was on the last exam, I know. And I bet most of you guys didn't know this. So that's where I come in, I can help you guys. Okay, let's go through another one here. The dad of your six-year-old patient says that fluoride made him sick last time, so not to give it to him. The mom comes in with the son two days later for his appointment, and the dentist diagnoses four cavities after his cleaning. You highly recommend fluoride and ask the mom's permission to apply. She gives you permission. What do you do? Typical exam question. I will be quiet. I will let you guys read the question to yourself and read the answers to yourself. I'm, I really want to know what you guys think. So I'll be quiet now to give you guys a minute. You guys are fast. This is really, really good. Sorry for my sniffles again. And I'm getting a lot of different answers. So I'm definitely going to chat about this one with you guys. I want to talk about fluoride because fluoride is everything on the exam and it should be everything in your practice too. Oh, 
Sorry, guys, my nose is driving me crazy. You guys are very good though. And again, even if you don't get the right answer, don't be discouraged because you will remember questions like this. Those of you who are actually getting the wrong answers, you will remember the questions better and you will be pros come exam time. I'm telling you. Okay, so the answer is B. So there were several different answers. I'm gonna read the question again, sorry, because it's a lengthy question here. So the dad calls, um, the dad of your, sorry, the dad of your six-year-old patient calls and says fluoride made him sick last time, so not to give it to him. This happens all the time. The mom comes in with the son two days later for his appointment and the dentist diagnoses four cavities after his cleaning. You highly recommend fluoride and ask the mom's permission to apply. She gives you permission. What do you do? You apply the fluoride varnish. So yes, the dad did tell you not to apply it, but guess what? The dad might've changed his mind if he knew that, oh shoot, my son has four new cavities. What is the purpose of fluoride? To remineralize. The child needs fluoride. If they're getting four new cavities at age six, they need fluoride. They might not be using a toothpaste with fluoride. They might have acidic saliva. You don't know what the issue is, but at the very least, you need to apply fluoride varnish, okay? But does everybody get that? So just because the dad said, don't do it, you do have to listen to them. So you should have made a note in the chart saying that dad called and said not to give the fluoride varnish. But things have changed since then. And guess what? Dad's not there. Mom and dad, it's their child. If there's a note in the chart or something saying, I don't know, um, the parents are separated, all treatment is dependent on dad, I don't know that kind of does change things a bit, then you would need to call dad, get a hold of dad and say, okay, this is what's happening. We want to apply the fluoride varnish, this is why. So unless there's a special note saying, you know, mom doesn't have legal custody or something, don't listen to mom, you know, something like that. But if it doesn't say that, which it doesn't in the question, it's the person who's at the appointment and things can change, right? Because when dad called, he didn't have four cavities. Um, oh, yeah, oh yeah, sorry. So, so let me talk about some of the other answers first. So A, so tell the mom with four cavities. Sorry, tell the mom who has, I'm so sorry, he has four cavities. You will only apply to those areas since her ex-husband called earlier and asked not to give sun fluoride. So would you only apply it to those four cavities? No, you just don't do it. Fluoride is everywhere. It's not localized because what's the point? Um, so B is correct because you apply the fluoride varnish. C, you apply the fluoride gel since he is only six years old. Well, that's not true. The CDHO, you guys, fluoride varnish is the way to go now. Did you guys know that? It was in a milestones issue a while ago. Fluoride varnish is the way to go because it has the greatest uptake of fluoride with the enamel. That's why you wouldn't recommend gel. So I did have a few of you guys ask that because gel just isn't the best now. Fluoride foam, fluoride gel, it all works. Um, the milk rinse, all of that, it all works. But if it's in the office, they want you guys to use fluoride varnish because it has the greatest uptake of the enamel, okay? Um, but having that said, you guys, if they're very specific with a question, Let's say the question is your child has generalized composite fillings and a two central veneers. What fluoride would you use? Then you would use the one that doesn't etch restorations. You would use acidulated phosphate fluoride. I have all of the different types of the fluorides in the prep course. So look at that module talking about all the different types of fluorides and you will know when to apply which one, okay? Because I could talk about this for the whole hour. So we don't have to do that for you guys. But so go in that course and you will learn all of that. And D, did anybody pick D? If you did, that's okay, sorry. If you did, that's okay. <laughs> but you would give fluoride because mom is there, cavities. Does that make sense to everybody? 
yes, good. Well, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help because, um, you know, just because you fail or you get wrong answers doesn't mean you're going to fail again. It doesn't mean you're hopeless. This is how people learn. You're not expected to be perfect. Think of your first day as a dental hygienist, you guys. Think of how you came since then. These things take time. Um, yes, yeah, so I go through all of the different fluorides in the prep course, and I'm sorry, somebody did ask me earlier the link to the prep course. I can give it to you. You're not obligated to sign up, by the way, you guys. It's just if you feel you need the help, um, I mean, I made the course, so obviously I'm going to tell you it's good. <laughs> but if you feel you need the help, this will help you guys pass. So isn't that the main thing? Um, oh, uh, Vanessa, sorry. I'm not sure what category. They're kind of all over the place because I keep adding new things. I don't know for sure. If you can't find it, tell me and I'll do some searches on it. I have been, um, I did revamp the course, what, a month ago? Um, so I'm sorry. I don't remember the new category, but if you can't find it, tell me and I'll definitely put it in there. I know I talked about it in a video. Um, so if you signed up for like the extra videos package, then I know it's in there too. But if you can't find it, please tell me. Good. I'm so happy that it helps. Okay, you guys, let's go through another question. Your 18-year-old patient has been seeing you since she was a child. You both get to talking while waiting for a check from the dentist. And she admits her therapist was inappropriate with her, but she isn't completely sure. She says his advance, um, sorry, his advances were unwanted. She is very troubled by this and doesn't know what to do. I'll let you guys read this again. It's a loaded question. And I'll let you guys think of that one. I have to sneeze, but everybody's watching me, so I probably won't be able to, <laughs> even though it's on live. Um, yeah, oh yeah, sorry. I will stop talking, but then I'll explain um, the video add-on that I just mentioned in a second. I will get the link for you guys too, in case you want it. It's not mandatory. But I should say the video add-on is only for those who purchased the quality assurance prep course. Because it is an add-on. If you guys purchase the quality assurance prep course, you will see a link to the add-on videos. If you wanted that, you don't have to. It's just sort of additional stuff. People were asking me um, for like teaching videos so they don't have to read through everything. So I have um, video sessions as an add-on course from 2018 and 2019 on all topics. So you can actually pick and choose the topics that you want to listen to me talk about. If you were having trouble, say with pharmacology, you would click on the videos for pharmacology and I would explain that to you. So yes, they're mock exams and case studies too. <laughs> and you know what? I have allergies a lot, so I'm just kind of used to it, but they are actually really bad today. So I'm so sorry if I sound horrible as I'm sniffling, but I feel like I can't breathe. <laughs> okay, so this one is harder for you guys because a lot of you guys stopped answering unless you've fallen asleep. I hope I'm not making anybody fall asleep. I'm definitely going to talk about this. And I, I got all different answers, A, B, C, and D. I know it's hard. I know. So I hope they have this question, something similar to it on the exam. So then you'll know the answer. Okay. So let me talk about this, you guys. So D is the best answer. Tell her she should report it and you are legally obligated to do the same. So remember how I said we, you know, we can't really follow up with somebody who's an adult and has reported abuse, but you know what's different? A therapist. So they're a fellow professional. So let's say she was 30 years old and said her doctor made unwanted advances towards her. As a professional against another professional, you have to report it. So remember how I said you can only report children and senior suspected abuse? With professionals, you can as well. This is also in milestones, you guys. So read those milestones magazines, okay? 
it is in there. Even if you do a search on the CDHO website for abuse baby, it will be in there. If it's a therapist, a doctor, a dentist, we need to report it because, and they say this is why, what ends up happening is the patient, you know, they see a professional as, well, they know best. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Maybe, you know, if I say something, oh, I can't say anything because that's bad. They're a professional. So that's why we have to go ahead and report it because quite often they don't say anything and then it gets worse, you know, whatever. So that's why D is the best answer. So A is not correct because you can report it now. She's an adult, but you can report it because it's a professional. Does everybody get the fine line? And then B is not correct because, well, you don't want to wait till next time. You want to report it now. You would never tell somebody, oh, I understand you were abused or something. Let's just see if it happens again and then we will report it. No, 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 no. You don't want it to happen again. That's the whole point. C, um, tell her she needs to be sure before reporting. You would never say that. But I see why some of you guys might have said that only because, you know, as you're talking to her, she says, well, she wasn't completely sure but she admits that the therapist was inappropriate and the advances were unwanted. That sums it all in. Yes, if it wasn't a professional, and you know what, you guys, like just to be perfectly honest with you, if this was me, I would report it, I don't care. But they actually do say we can only report it or we're, sorry, sorry, um, I'm not using the right terms here. It's not mandatory, uh, mandatory. It's not mandatory to report it if it's an adult because they're an adult, they have autonomy, they, it's their, what they wanna do. If they wanna report it, they will because they understand they should, you know? Children don't get it. Seniors don't get it sometimes. Adults get it. If they wanna report it, they can. So we're not supposed to. It's not mandatory, I should say. But if it's a therapist, if it's a professional, think a doctor, a chiropractor, a nurse, you know, a surgeon, whatever. We have to report it. It's mandatory. Um, good question. So let's say she was saying it was her uncle. Technically, we're not mandated to report it because she's an adult now. She has that right to do it herself. She understands, but I still would. I would. But on the exam, you're not supposed to. Does that make sense? I don't see them being that sticky about it on the exam. They just want you to know that if somebody, you should report it. Does that make sense? I mean, think about it, you guys. Would you report it? Probably, right? You're not going to go, oh, I'm not supposed to. No, you're going to do it. It's kind of like they, they used to say to perform CPR on somebody, well, they can sue you if they didn't want it. Well, I would do it anyway. I'm not going to be like, hmm, I don't know if I should. You're just going to do it. It's a fine line, right? Good. I'm glad that makes sense. Okay. You apply tape to all of your cassette wrappings and use this as your chemical indicator. What will this determine? So I do talk about this because in the practice test, a lot of people got infection control questions wrong. The average, by the way, you guys, on that free practice quiz that I was telling you guys about is 60%. That's very low. So that tells you guys you need help, right? <laughs> you need to take a course. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, here's the link, you guys, to that practice quiz. Take it, it's free. The average is 60%. That's horrible. <laughs> and you know what? If everybody got 90%, I would be like, okay, the exam's way too easy. I did something wrong. So that's kind of the point. I want you guys to realize you have to study for this exam and you need the help. Okay, really, that's what tutoring and teaching is all about. You don't want to buy a textbook and just be like, okay, I have the textbook. I spent 200 bucks or however much it is these days. Where do I start? What do I study? In a course, I give you guys the modules. You don't have to worry. Just study the whole thing and you'll be fine. And ask questions if you don't understand something. 
I'll talk about this one too. See, because a lot of you guys are getting it wrong, which is fine. That's okay, because I bet if they had this question, something similar on the exam, you would get it right now, because I'm going to talk about it. Um, yeah, sorry. So if you guys are in the quality assurance prep course, which I am going to show you guys that afterwards, for those of you who are curious, um, if you're in the prep course, there is another add on now, which I didn't have before this week. It's called express. What's it called? Express dental hygiene videos or something. I'm sorry, express dental hygiene review videos. So it is literally hundreds of videos from 2018 to 2019, where I go through mock exams and case studies, and you can pick a topic with what you want. You don't need it, but that's just kind of additional help to help you guys with the quality assurance exam prep. Yeah, I'll explain that at the end, just in case like people here don't wanna hear about it, cause I'm not here to sell you guys anything. I'm just here to help you guys with this. But feel free to ask questions, of course. Oh, sorry, somebody was raising their hand. I didn't know that that was an option in Zoom. <laughs> um, Arlette, sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but if you have a question, you can just type in the chat box, let me know, and I will see it. Okay, guys, let's talk about this. So, oops, oh my gosh, is this frozen? Okay, there we go. So let me read it again. You apply tape to all of your cassette wrappings and use this as your chemical indicator. What will this determine? So when you apply the indicate, sorry, the indicator, the indicator tape to your like wrapped instruments, all that does is tell you that the sterilizer has been hot enough. It does not tell you anything else. Now, B is correct, by the way. If the outside of the package is sterilized, now that's kind of correct, but it doesn't say it's sterilized. It tells you the outside of the package um, has been a hot enough temperature. So, that, so the second part's wrong, but the first part's right. Does that make sense? A lot of you guys picked B and I can see why. If this question was, or sorry, if the answer, if the answer was, if the outside of the package has reached optimal temperature, that would be correct but not that it's been sterilized. The only way to tell is with a spore test because spore tests kill everything. But you can't only just have a spore test because that would be very cost effective, wouldn't it? You need the internal indicators. You need the external indicators. You need the spore test. You need, oh my God, we need everything. I have my own business. Did I tell you guys that? So things are expensive as heck. When I went through my on-site review, my assessor, even she said like, oh my God, you had to buy all of this yourself. I'm like, yeah, the sterilizer, the indicators, the score tests, all of it. She felt sorry for me actually. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but does everybody understand this? Please tell me if you don't, I hope this helped. Okay, next one. Samantha is a new patient. You are doing her full intra and extra oral exam today. You see a few things to make note of. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Don't know why. There must be somebody at home. What do you see here? Can everybody see the picture okay? And yes, they might have pictures on the exam. Sorry for my dogs barking. Why are they barking? That's what happens when you work from home. <laughs> and you're live you'll get random dogs barking. I have four dogs. I know, I'm crazy. They're little dogs though. You guys are good. My dental hygiene students always get this wrong because this is a question in my oral pathology lecture uh, for dental hygiene students. Like they're prepping to take the board exam and they always get this wrong. But you guys are pretty good with this. I'm still going to explain it though, because I'm still getting a few A's and B's, but most of you guys got the right answer. Yes, you guys will be done at nine. So sorry, if you guys have to go, you are more than welcome to. Um, we should be able to get through all the questions though. If you guys can stay till nine, that would be fun. Okay, let's talk about it. So B is the best answer. So Samantha is a new patient. You're doing her full intra and extra oral exam today. You see a few things to make note of. What do you see um, here? You see a lot though, don't you? So remember how you only saw this one, okay? 
So thin, thin enamel is true. That's a right answer. But to be more specific, you see dental erosion, okay? If you don't know what dental erosion is, tell me and I can explain it. Um, but this is the perfect example of dental erosion. The upper anteriors um, it is the premolars too, but this is very common. Yes, I see a composite filling. Yes, I see a chipped tooth, possible decay. It's tricky to say. Yes, there's pronounced rugae. You see the incisive papilla, but try not to look at everything. Look at the main thing you see. This takes experience though. So if you're just out of school, say three years, you might not have really seen this right away, but dental erosion is the first thing. Thin enamel is correct, but dental erosion is more specific. You always want to be more specific. So I just brought up a couple other pictures of dental erosion to show you guys the different severities of it. Okay. I don't think anybody picked C or D. Um, so that's good because you can't see crowns or veneers in this case. So I'm glad that you guys picked either A or B. Does that make sense to everybody? If not, just let me know. Okay. Samantha has excellent oral hygiene, but you wonder why her erosion is generalized. What could be the cause? This is a tricky one, you guys. Think about it. What could be the cause? And this is good to know too, because if you're telling a patient they have dental, um, dental erosion, they might be like, oh my goodness, really? What caused that? You can't say, I don't know. Or you can't say, well, because you had an eating disorder because you don't know if that was the case, right? So you need to know like a wide variety. And sorry, I just kind of gave you guys an answer for something. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's killing me, my nose. <laughs> Now my nose is all red. It's kind of a good thing to wear a mask sometimes because when I see my patients tomorrow, they will have no idea that I had horrible allergies today. I know this makes you think, doesn't it? A lot of you guys are picking either A or B. Yeah, I'd say those are the most common ones. So Samantha has excellent oral hygiene, but you wonder why her erosion is generalized. What could be the cause? So you guys, dental erosion is caused by eating disorders. It could be from eating acidic foods. It could be a number of thing, um, things, but the best answer is acids because even if they have an eating disorder, what's causing the erosion? It's the acids from vomiting that's causing the erosion. Um, yes, you guys. So in the picture, it's definitely just showing the linguals right now of the upper interiors for sure. Um, and that is a common spot for if somebody does have an eating disorder, it's the maxillary anterior linguals. So let's say that was another question. If the question was your client has an eating disorder, where would you see the erosion? You would say maxillary anterior linguals. That's true. But this one is just simply saying what could be the cause is it's acids. So does everybody understand why B is the better answer and it's not A? And please be sensitive to this topic. Like you would never say to somebody, well, you had an eating disorder, so that's why you had erosion. Hey, they might have, but if they haven't shared that with you, don't bring that up because maybe they didn't have an eating disorder. Maybe they were sucking on lemons all day, every day, right? Yes, acids. Now, she might not have had an eating disorder. You don't know that unless she tells you, basically. Just because somebody has severe erosion, we do automatically think eating disorder because that's very common. But she could have been sucking on lemons. She could have been eating tomatoes and sucking on tomatoes 24 hours a day. You just never know. She could have been having pop. You just really don't know. Acids is the best answer, right? I know, makes you think. Okay, next one. Um, oh, sorry, there we go. Um, your nine-year-old patient is in for his regular cleaning and checkup. He is always a handful. 
This time he is kicking and screaming. Mom tells you to go ahead and ignore him. She wants his teeth cleaned. What do you do? This is like a real world question too. But some of you guys might do one thing. Some of you guys might do another. I will definitely explain this to you. And this is tricky because many answers are correct here, by the way. In fact, personally, I'd say all of them are correct, but I'm going to tell you guys why one is the better one. The hint is reading the question again, picking out key points. Always read those questions on the exam. Uh, Vanessa, have you taken the exam yet? I don't think so, right? Sorry, or no, sorry, have you? I can't remember. And tomorrow is your first time, right? Sorry, I can't remember. Okay, I thought so. Okay, a lot of different answers, you guys. Let's talk about it. So A is the best answer. Let me tell you why. So your nine-year-old patient is in for a regular cleaning. They're a child. He is always a handful. So it's not like this is his first appointment. He's nervous. He's acting out. If that was the case, I would try to talk to the patient first. If he's still being a handful, I would just simply say, okay, today's not the day. We're going to rebook your appointment. Let's give it six months, have them get older, smarten up a bit. We'll try again. It's not worth your time to go crazy. B is also kind of correct because you can't clean anybody's teeth if they're kicking and screaming. You can if you want. You know, the real world answer is you do what you want. I personally can't because I feel like I could injure them. If they're going to kick and scream, that's not worth my time. I would just be like, bye. We'll just rebook. But the fact that he's always a handful tells you he's done this before. He needs a children's dentist. That's what they're there for. Children's dentists, pediodontists see children who have behavioral issues. This is a behavior issue. When somebody's kicking and screaming at age nine, if they're three, okay, they're going to be nervous. They're going to be doing crazy things, but like nine years old, come on, they're old enough now. And I have even said that to some of my nine-year-old patients. I might say something like, okay, you're old enough now. We can do this. But if they just simply don't let me, I go, okay, it's not worth it. But that's the nice thing about being a mobile hy um, hygienist. They let you because they feel very comfortable in their own home, but they also feel like they have to listen to you. It's pretty neat. Yeah, so do you guys understand that though? Why A is the better answer? Mainly because it says he's always a handful. All of these are correct, aren't they? All of these are correct, but pick the best one. Think what the CDHO is thinking. They want you to know what a pedodontist is for children's dentists who have behavioral issues. So A would be the best answer. Sorry, we might be a little bit after nine. It's 8.56. Just two more questions. Okay, your patient comes in with heavy plaque generalized to all areas of the teeth. He is 10 years old and insists he tries very hard to brush properly. What is the best oral hygiene aid to use? This is a great question, you guys. I don't expect everybody to get this one right either. What do you guys think? I would love to see your answers actually. What do you guys think? And I'll give you guys a second to read through this too. Yes, you guys, this will be recorded. I'm going to put it in the Facebook group, the quality, or sorry, the Dental L Tutoring Facebook group. And you know what, you guys, I'll put it in the Quality Assurance Practice Quiz group as well, um, the course, the Quality Assurance Practice Quiz course. When in doubt, you guys just join the Facebook group and you'll see it. I'll put the link for you guys there right now. It's just the Facebook group, the Dental Health Tutoring. I update a lot there too and post a lot of videos and it always pertains to the exam anyway. 
And if you guys aren't part of my YouTube channel yet, definitely subscribe, not just because I want you to, but just because you will hear more questions. There's always mock exam questions happening. I do it all the time. Good, I'm so glad that this helps. And this one is a tricky one, isn't it? I know. Okay, let's talk about this one. Uh, yes, at the end, I can give you guys like the link to the YouTube channel if you want to subscribe for more mock exams. Hey, you might as well. I will talk about all of that, okay? Just in case some people who are here don't care to listen to me talk about that stuff, I won't talk about it yet. Okay, so A is the best answer because, let's pick out the keywords again. Your patient comes in with heavy plaque generalized to all areas. He's 10 years old. He insists he tries very hard to brush. What is the best oral hygiene aid to use? So a lot of these are correct. A is the best because if he's insisting, he, he's, he tries to brush. He's missing the mark, right? He's not doing something right or he can't. Apply the disclosing agent, show, have him show you how he brushes. Show him first like how much plaque there's, there is on there with the, the, um, the, the disclosing tabs and then have him brush, and then he will see the areas he's missing. So, and yeah, that does happen a lot. He could have been lying. <laughs> but does that make sense though, you guys? So that's why A is the best. B could be correct as well, because maybe he just needs an electric toothbrush to do most of the work for him and he'd be fine. A water pick, he's 10 years old. I wouldn't suggest a water pick for kids just because it does have a lot of power. It can't hurt. But that's just not your first thing is okay. The patient can't brush. There's heavy plaque. Let's give them the water pick. No. Um, oh no. And that is totally fine. For those of you who had just logged on, this has been, or will be, um, the recording I'm going to post in the Facebook group. So make sure you're part of the group, um, Dental L Tutoring, and you guys will see it in there. I'm also going to have it on my YouTube channel. So if you're not part of that yet, definitely be a part of it. A lot of you guys are taking the test either tomorrow or Sunday. Let me know how it goes. Oh, sorry. And fluoride is not the best answer either. Fluoride, you guys, think cavities right away. When there's plaque, think brushing, think disclosing tabs, oral hygiene. Does that make sense? If not, please tell me. Last question. Ah, so this is kind of like a special needs question. What is the importance of glucagon? They asked about diabetes on the exam. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry, but I'm really glad that I could find these things. I feel better already. Well, no, not really. Thank you. <laughs> My nose is getting so red. I probably shouldn't have turned on the webcam for you guys. I probably should have just had it so it's no video and you could see my voice or hear my voice. Sorry, that would have made more sense. And good luck on your tests, you guys. For those of you who are taking it this weekend, good luck. Vanessa, thank you for answering. You're the quickest one so far. This is a tricky one, right? I know, good luck. You have three tries. Yeah, I know you have three tries, but I want you all to pass on the first try or at the very least the second try if you've already taken it. Yes. If you guys, honestly, if you plan to take the exam this weekend and you haven't signed up for my prep course, you can still sign up. Just study everything tomorrow and that is fine. That will sort of give you the confidence to know that you know your stuff. Or it will tell you, shoot, I don't know my stuff. I'm going to postpone the test for a week, learn everything, and then you'll pass. It's worth the investment, you guys. And did you know, come tax time, tell your accountant, give them the receipt because when you sign up for my tutoring courses, it will email you a receipt. Give that to your accountant and that is considered taxable. So you can get a tax credit because that's part of education. But your accountant has to do it though. Like they put something in there to make it go through. If you use like TurboTax, I think you can too, but I just don't use TurboTax, so I don't know how that works. Give it to your accountant. You will get some money back for this tutoring course, so it's worth the investment. And 
And you know what, you guys, they haven't said, unless I'm wrong, I, I haven't seen that. If you fail three times, I don't know what happens. They haven't said yet. I haven't seen that in any of the articles, emails, milestones, issues, so I don't know. And I don't know anybody that's failed more than twice, if that helps. So keep me posted, but hopefully you guys won't fail three times. Okay, you guys, so let's talk about it. So I wouldn't expect you guys to know this per se, but this has been on the exam before, something similar. What is the importance of glucagon? A is the best answer because this is the only answer. So it promotes fuel metabolism. A lot of people see glucagon and think glucose. There's differences there, okay? So glucagon promotes fuel metabolism, which is glucose into the blood. It doesn't promote fuel storage. That's glucose out of the blood. Oh, yes, this is inside the course. I don't know which category either, Vanessa. You might remember maybe the special needs category, but they ask about diabetes. And don't be worried. If you guys got a lot of these questions wrong, don't be concerned, but it just means you need to study. If you got most of these questions wrong, I do not suggest taking your exam this weekend. I suggest studying for it longer, at least waiting a week. Because what's a week going to do? You will feel worse if you take the exam when you don't feel ready and you fail, right? You just don't want that choice. I'm not trying to discourage you from taking the exam. But if you felt you didn't really understand this, then please, you know, um, yes, you should have this in your um, emergency kit. As long as you have like, ta like a glu like a glucose upping source, like whether it be like orange juice or something, I forget what I have in my emergency kit, but, um, I bought mine from hands med hands said, whatever, sorry, I'm not sure what company, but it just comes with everything prepared. It's expensive, but then I don't have to worry about it. Okay, guys, is everybody okay with this? Um, and you know, it's so hard to say, you guys, I can't really tell anybody if you're ready or not, because I just don't know. But I can confidently say if you've taken my course, you've gone through the modules, and you feel good, then you are ready. You are ready. Um, sorry, I'll give you guys Oh, sorry, here. Stop sharing my screen for a sec. I'm going to show you guys a couple options just because some of you guys have been asking. So um, full disclosure, I'm going to talk about my course right now for, for um, those of you who are curious. If you're not curious, you don't care, you're, you are more than welcome to stop the video and say goodbye. It was so nice having you guys. Um, do not feel you have to stay because the questions are done. Questions are done. I hope you guys did okay with that. Um, let's see, sorry, I'm just looking at some questions. And you know what's funny? A lot of hygienists in the Facebook group have said to go through the national practice exams. I'm not saying I disagree, but I'm saying the national practice exams are really difficult and they're not on the same level as the quality assurance exam. So even if you do really, really well with those national practice exams, which you have to pay for, which they think $40 a piece, um, it doesn't prepare you, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, for the quality assurance exam because they're geared towards the board exam and the quality assurance exam is not. It's not easy like some people might think, but it's not hard like the board exam. Oh, good. I'm so happy that you like my course. That is always nice to hear. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, if you guys, I'm going to show you that now. My apologies. For those of you guys who signed up for the, um, the quality assurance course, I'm sharing my screen right now. It did have a different name. So you might have signed up under the name new quality assurance prep course or just dental hygiene quality assurance prep course. They're all the same course. I just had to um, switch the links because some of the links were compromised. So this is the new link. But it's all the same course and the course was just updated last month. I do update it every time a test comes out. So at least three times a year. So they have been updated. For those of you who were asking about the express um, video add on, they're not inside the course for the 120. So they're not inside this course. 
but it's an add-on to purchase if you want to. You don't have to. I just added the add-on. It's $99. Um, if you're inside this course, you will see the link for the add-on if you want it. So it's, 90, it's $99 and it includes all my videos from, sorry, from 2019. I think I said 2018 before. From 2019 and 2020. So there's literally hundreds of videos where I'm teaching you like this because I had a lot of um, dental hygienists email me and saying, you know, do you have any videos that I can listen to? Like I will pay for it, but I want some teaching videos. And, and I'm thinking to myself, I have tons of them. Why don't I share that with you guys? So, but the videos that I have were for the board exam prep. So that's why you do pay for them because it's, it's only fair because dental hygiene students have to pay for them. So it's kind of only fair, but it is a lot cheaper. Do not sign up for my board exam prep course because that's almost $400 and that preps you for the board exam. You don't want that one. You want this one right here if you want the prep course, the quality assurance study guide. I'm going to leave you the link again in the chat box. This one goes through the topics you need to know for the quality assurance exam. In fact, I can show you guys right now. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to show you guys inside the course right now. Actually, first story, I'm going to show you guys inside the express course with all of the videos. Actually, I did post something on YouTube too. So, sorry guys, I'm just viewing it as a customer here. So if you guys wanted the extra videos, this is what it looks like, okay? So you will log in. So this is the $99 one. This is the add-on. So you, you, you will see sessions from 2020, which are 54 plus videos. I say plus because 2020 is still here. So um, there will be more added. And then in 2019, you will see 15 videos. But on top of that, you should be added to my YouTube channel where there's hundreds of videos. You can do a search for pharmacology and see hundreds, but the good videos are these ones. They're not all on YouTube for free. These ones are what you have to pay for because they're the good ones. There are sessions similar to this one today where I go through mock exam questions. So I'm just talking to you guys for an hour. I go through the same mock exam questions, but different topics. Um, sorry, somebody had a question I forgot already. Um, I showed you guys the, the, oh yeah. I was gonna show you guys inside the quality assurance course. So the prep course, in case you guys wanted to see it, I'm gonna show you guys, cause it is a, it, it, it is a great course. It is the $120 one, view as a customer. So let me show you guys right now. So if you haven't signed up for the prep course, um, this is what it is. So this is what it looks like when you log in, okay? Notice to your left-hand side, all of these topics. So you guys, so anytime I do update something, I put it in like a, a text format here. But look at all of this. So you guys have lots of resources and everything. So you have record keeping, you have pharmacology, you have radiography, community, infection control, all of that down there. So this includes, um, there's quizzes, there's PowerPoints. This is, this is what you need to pass the quality assurance exam. It's perfect for those of you who are like, oh my goodness, um, I haven't taken an exam in such a long time, but there is now the add-on. So the video that I had just, or I'm sorry, the other one that I had just shown you guys, um, let me just stop sharing my screen for a moment, just so I don't show you guys any student names or anything. So I'm just pulling up that product again. The video sessions is an add-on to the quality assurance um, prep course. If you're in the prep course, you're the only one who will see this add-on because it's for a really good deal. It's typically almost $400 to get these videos plus other stuff too. But so it's only $99 for you guys because um, I realize a lot of you guys won't have months to study. So these are the videos right here. There's 54 for 2020 and there's 2019, there's 15. So can I show you guys some of these? Let's see. 
Um, let's see right now. Oh, sorry, shoot. I was hoping to show you guys some videos. Oh, here, I actually can. But my screen is way too big. Shoot, guys, sorry, it's actually not letting me. Oh, yes, it is. Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time. So when you guys click on the videos inside this course, look at all of these here. So you have infection control, you have caries, you have fluoride, you have perio, the new AAP lecture. So you guys will know all about that. You have a full mock exam session on perio gingivitis. You have, again, perio again. You have stains, you have inflammation. So you can pick and choose which topics you want to listen to or listen to all of them. This will also prepare you, of course, for the quality assurance exam. But if you were to only study this, you can't do that. You need to go back and study the modules in the written test because you need to read those PowerPoints too. Does that make sense? Oh, good, you guys. No, I'm so, I am so happy to help. Like I'm not here to sell you something, but I'm just telling you guys since people have been asking me. Good, I would love to have you. I definitely like to explain things. And yes, the express videos cover more than enough. It covers all the topics because it's all the videos that I did in 2019 and 2020. It covers everything. Um, sorry. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. You don't have to buy that add-on for $99. The express video add-on, you don't have to buy it, but it's more for those where you feel, okay, I would be taught better with videos. If you liked the session today, if you liked how we kind of talked about the mock exam questions and the answers, then the express videos will really help you. I'm not just saying that, but it's the same thing. So they're 45 minutes to one hour long each time. You can pick and choose different topics. So it's really up to you. I have had um, dental hygienists just take the quality assurance prep course and pass. So it's not like you have to take both to pass. It's truly up to you. It's just, you know how sometimes there's like a silver package or sorry, there's a, there's a bronze package, there's a silver package and there's a gold package. If you wanna do whatever you, you can, take the gold package. And that's the quality assurance prep course with the add-ons with the videos. And you know what, you guys, the videos are great for the real world too. If you ever feel you want to do a refresher on oral pathology, but you don't want to read your textbook on oral pathology, listen to my videos on oral pathology. You will have full access to everything forever. So it's not like it's only six months or two weeks or something. You have full access forever. So I, I hope that helped to answer your question. Um, no. For those of you who took the ethics, the jurisprudence exam, oh my god, I don't get 100% either. I'm horrible at that. No, you should not be worried. Like, I barely passed it, and I took this so many years ago. Oh, good. I'm so happy. You are so welcome, and thank you for joining. Good, you guys. I am so happy to help. Yes, the um, quality assurance prep course has mock exams and quizzes. And have you signed up for the free quiz? I'll leave the link for you guys again. The free quiz has, it's a big quiz. Um, there's 60 questions, I believe, because I just added some new ones. I'm, I, I'm showing you guys that right now, and I'm going to share my screen to show you. So the link, you guys, that I just posted, this is the free quiz right here. You don't pay for it. It's 60 questions, and the quiz is meant to see if you're prepared for the exam or not. If you're not, it's a good idea to take my quality assurance prep course because then you will be prepared. That's what I'm here for. I truly am. Um, I'm going to actually post the video right away. So as soon as it processes, it does take about an hour. I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. You, somebody was asking me what my YouTube channel is. I will post the link for you guys right now. Sorry, I have so many things open. So I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel. It's um, If you just look me up under Dental L, you will find me, but there's my channel right there. I'm, it usually takes an hour to process, but I'm going to put it up right away 
Um, I post videos often. Um, so it's definitely a good channel to be a part of. If you guys don't know me yet, I'm very honest and I say it how it is. So I talk about crazy patients. I talk about what I love about my job. I talk about what I don't love about my job, but it's all to really help dental hygienists, well, dental professionals, dental assistants, it doesn't matter who. Um, dental professionals, because if you're in dental, you probably love it and you love to talk about it. So that's what my YouTube channel is all about. And I help students and dental hygienists. Sorry, guys, I don't want to keep you too long. I know it's almost 930 now. I'm sorry. Um, let me see. Sorry. Um, some of them do. Yes. So the quizzes in the quality assurance course they don't tell you the right answer right away because I don't want to give you guys the right answer right away. I want you guys to find the right answer. So those ones don't. But if you look, it, it, um, if you open my PowerPoint with the quizzes in the PowerPoint, you will see questions and answers like what we did today. Um, and if you purchase, let's say the Express video package, that is just sort of a video like today where I talk about the question and then the answer question then the answer so it does have a little bit of both and thank you so much I am like I'm very happy to hear that this is very helpful for a lot of people that that makes me happy it means I didn't come on when I wasn't feeling well for no reason no I don't have COVID it's just allergies <laughs> you guys are funny you are very very welcome thank you so much for coming on Thank you for taking your time out of a Friday evening. This is what I do on my Friday evenings, guys. I teach. I don't go out. I teach. I'm boring. I know. Yes, I'm a mobile dental hygienist. I have my own business for about two years now. I've been a dental professional for 15 years. But for the past two years, I've had my own business as a mobile hygienist. And yes, I teach dental hygienists how to start their own business, too. If you guys go to my website, um, dentalpodia.com, which I'll put in here too, there's lots of links, eh? Um, you will see all of the courses that I teach. So I teach dental hygiene students, dental assisting students, and dental hygienists, because I love to teach. Are there any other questions, you guys? Because I did promise that I would answer all questions, and I always uphold my promises. Listen, if I'm going to be here till 11 p.m., I might not answer every, everybody's questions, but I do try. You are very welcome. My pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Okay, so no other questions? Um, the quality assurance course does not include the videos as well. Um, it does include a couple videos, but it doesn't include all the videos on all the topics because I didn't want to overwhelm people too much. And by just taking the quality assurance prep course, you will pass. Students have passed by just taking that prep course. The add-on, the Express um, Dental Hygiene Videos Review, that has videos on all topics. So there's hundreds of videos there. So it's just sort of if you really wanted to do whatever you could, if you didn't, if it just helps you to listen to videos more, then you do want the add on, but it's not necessary. Does that make sense? Because I had a lot of dental hygienists ask me, um, ask me for the videos. I just added the video like add on this this week because I had people ask me, like, do you do videos, too? Because I would prefer to see those, you know. So that's just why I did the add-on. Yes, you guys, for those of you taking the exam this weekend, please email me, message me, whatever. Let me know how you did. Good luck. I know you can pass. Don't be nervous. I know it's impossible not to be nervous, but you will do great. Keep taking those mock exams. In fact, if you just want to take mock exams, you guys, the video express course is probably what you want. In fact, if you guys just want the video course, I can definitely do that for you guys, but you really need the prep course with the PowerPoints too, okay? But I'm gonna give you guys the option of doing that too if you want. So I'm gonna give you guys the link. I'll post it in my YouTube channel. Um, but just listening to the videos won't help you pass. You need the PowerPoint like lectures too. 
but I will still post a link for, for um, those of you guys who want to do just the videos for whatever reason. Um, but if you want like a discount, then get the prep course too, the quality assurance prep course. And you know what? That's a really good question. I'm sure you can listen to like the PowerPoint modules on video. I'm not that technical though. I don't know how you would do it. You would probably download a program or an app that reads the PowerPoints to you. I bet you can do that. That's something I should do. Learn how to do for you guys. Huh, it's not a bad idea. But that's also where the videos come in. Because my PowerPoints, I read out the videos to you. Maybe not the exact PowerPoints in the quality assurance prep course, um, but I should start doing that. I'm more than happy to, that's a great idea. That's genius, actually. So thank you. I will start doing that, but it's gonna take time. It took me years to do the prep course because these things take time. Any other questions, you guys? Um, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll give you guys the links to everything. I'll do a video in my YouTube channel by the weekend on how to do all of that. And also go to my Facebook group because I will post the links in the Facebook group just so I don't annoy anybody who doesn't care about the links. Be a part of my Facebook group and I'll post the links for just the express video if you want. I will post that link for you. So Dental L Tutoring is my Facebook group if you're not a part of it yet. Oh my gosh, my nose is so itchy, you guys. Allergies are no fun. Okay, guys, if you're good, I'll leave you alone. It's almost 9.30. Wow, an hour and a half of talking. But you guys did amazing. So thank you guys so much for logging on. That was fantastic. You guys were a lot of fun. And I hope to talk to you guys very soon. And I hope to see you guys inside the course if that's something that you feel you need. Thank you. I hope to feel better soon. It's just allergies. So I know tomorrow I'll be fine. But allergies does make me very tired. Hopefully I don't look horrible. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great night, okay? And have a great weekend. Bye. And good luck for those of you taking your test. Good luck. Bye, guys. Bye.